In the beginning of the story we see Koju, who is also a god of vampires known as the fourth progenitor, he was going to his home when he saw a girl had fallen on the road, and when he saw her neck, Koju felt the urge to drink her blood. Koju calms his craving by drinking his own blood. Later he complains to his friend that he has got a lot of homework to do but his friend Yaze tells him that he will do this homework easily. His friend Asagi comes and tells him not to worry as she is ready to help him. After this Koju leaves for school under the hot burning sun. Koju realizes that someone is following him so he starts running away from the girl and the girl also follows him. Koju hides in a shop but as soon as he comes out he bumps into the girl. Yukina calls him the fourth progenitor and gets into a fighting position. Koju not understanding what to do, starts speaking Italian like an Italian tourist and escapes from there. Then he sees two boys molesting Yukina, they both hold her hand and misbehave with her but Yukina hits them both and they both fall on the ground. They are both vampires who summon their familiars to fight. Yukina is also not scared and takes out her weapon to fight them. Yukina kills his familiar in one attack and is about to attack the vampire when Koju stops her. Yukina asks Koju the reason for interfering in the fight. Koju replies that he was just trying to stop the fight like any normal person. Angry with Koju, Yukina leaves from there but she loses her purse and Koju picks it up. Koju finds Yukina's student ID in it so next day Koju comes to school to return the purse but as soon as he smells it, he starts feeling horny and quenches his thirst with blood. Yukina sees him sniffing her purse and calls him a disgusting person. Koju replies that he has come to return her purse and asks why she was following him yesterday. Instead of answering, Yukina gets into a fighting position to take the purse back, but her stomach grumbles with hunger so he realizes Yukina has no money for food, so Koju returns her purse and they both go to a restaurant to eat. Yukina tells him that she is a sword shaman who works for the Lion King organization, a secret organization created by the government to fight magic terrorism and disaster. Yukina further reveals that she has been sent to keep an eye on Koju as his being alive is a threat in itself and he alone is as powerful as an entire nation's army. Yukina suspects Koju is hiding in this area and has some evil intentions. Koju explains that he has been living in this place even before he became a vampire. But Yukina does not believe Koju that he was a human earlier and has now become a very powerful vampire. Koju tries to explain to her how the real fourth progenitor gave him her powers but then he gets a headache and cannot explain anything. Yukina believes him and agrees that he is not a dangerous vampire. But in fact, Koju remembers very well how the original fourth progenitor gave him her powers and how she died. We then see how the heads of the Lion King organization have called Yukina to keep an eye on Koju. They believe that Koju's presence is dangerous for this world so they give Koju's photo to Yukina and tell her to keep an eye on Koju and kill him if she thinks Koju is dangerous. They also give Yukina a weapon to kill him. Next morning Koju sees Yukina standing outside his building, Yukina says she is waiting for her luggage. Just then her belongings arrive which Yukina asks to keep in the room next to Koju. Seeing Yukina's luggage Koju comments that she doesn't even have a bed to sleep on. Yukina replies she wanted to go to the market to buy things but she is not able to go because she has to keep an eye on him. Koju asks Yukina to accompany him to the market in the evening. After this Koju comes to school and meets his teacher Natsuki. Natsuki is actually 26 years old but looks like a little girl and she knows that Koju is the fourth progenitor. Koju asks Natsuki about the Lion King organization. Natsuki tells him that the Lion King organization was created to kill him and that he should not have any relation with anyone associated with it. But Koju ignores his teacher's advice and goes shopping with Yukina. While returning home they meet Koju's sister who happens to be Yukina's good friend, she invites Yukina for a feast at her house as they are happy to be neighbors. Koju tells Yukina that when he got this power, he thought he could use it to end some of the world's problems, kill dangerous criminals and politicians, but he knows he can't do it alone. After finishing the food, 
Koju goes out for a walk but Yukina is standing in front of him with a wet body, who seems to have left the bath in the middle. Yukina says she must follow him wherever he is going. Koju tells her that he will wait for her so she should dry herself. On the way, Yukina tells him that she is an orphan and has been taught to read, write and use a weapon by the organization. Yukina likes a toy very much and Koju wants to impress her so he wins the toy but their teacher Natsuki comes there. Koju doesn't want to face her so he grabs Yukina's hand and runs away from Natsuki, then they both see that the city is on fire and a huge familiar is causing this destruction. Yukina takes out her weapon and she jumps on top of a train leaving Koju behind. Approaching the area, Yukina sees the huge familiar and its owner. The familiar fires a fire attack in one direction but a hand catches it and then that hand absorbs it. When Yukina reaches the place, she finds Rudolf, the combat deacon of Lotharingia, who tries to kill the owner of the large familiar, but Yukina saves him. Yukina attacks him with quick moves but he dodges them and knocks Yukina back with a single attack. Rudolf then asks his familiar Astarte to attack Yukina. Yukina blocks her attack with her weapon but Astarte takes out her other hand and attacks her. Yukina feels that she is about to die and remembers the moments she spent with Koju. Koju saves Yukina by punching Astarte's hand. Just by seeing Koju, Rudolf realizes that he is the Lord of Vampires the fourth progenitor. Astarte takes out both her arms to attack Koju and injures him. Koju loses control of himself and lightning starts flashing everywhere. In the morning we see that there is a scene of devastation all around, it is said on the news that 20,000 homes have lost electricity due to the explosion last night and it will cost 50 billion dollars to restore that place. Koju is very upset with all this news and asks Yukina if she has sent the report of what happened last night to the organization. Yukina is still unsure whether she should file a report or not because he did it all to save her life. Yukina says that he should not have made such a huge explosion. Koju explains he didn't do all this intentionally, he got some familiars along with his powers which are usually under his control but whenever his life is in danger the familiars come out and wreak havoc on their own and so far he has not been able to control them. Yukina asks Koju why he is not able to control his familiars. Koju explains to Yukina that he has not yet drunk the blood of another human being. Then Yaze comes there, they talk for a while and Yukina leaves, Yaze advises Koju not to cause trouble. Asagi tells Koju that all the man-made Island Management Corporation software got corrupted due to the explosion last night and she had to work all night to fix it. Asagi works part-time for the man-made Island Management Corporation who manages everything on this man-made island. Natsuki asks Koju to come to her room with Yukina. Natsuki asks him about the blast that happened last night, she tells him that there have been six sitch attacks in the last two months. Natsuki suspects whoever is doing these attacks may target Koju, so she forbids him from going out at night. Yukina feels that only they know that Rudolf is behind the attacks and if they catch him, she can prove Koju's innocence in her report. Koju thinks that being a foreigner, Rudolf must be hiding in a place where other people like him live. He thinks there must be some information about it in the man-made Island Management Corporation's data so he goes to Asagi to ask for help. Asagi looking at the data tells him about a factory which has been closed for a long time but has not been vacated yet. They both go there to find Rudolf. An illusion spell is placed on the door which Yukina removes with her weapon. They see many test subjects inside, seeing which Koju gets very angry. Astarte comes and tells them to run away as soon this island is going to submerge in water. Rudolf says he has found a way to drown this island. Koju asks Rudolf why he planted a familiar in Astarte. Rudolf replies that normally only a vampire can control a familiar but after doing this he can also control them. Rudolf also knows that the familiar will slowly eat Astarte's body and she will die in two weeks. Koju gets very angry hearing this and his whole body starts glowing. Rudolf asks Astarte to fight Koju but as Koju attacks Astarte, he collapses. 
Yukina attacks Astarte with her weapon but Astarte punches her and knocks her away. Rudolf attacks with his weapon to kill Yukina but Koju comes to save her, getting his head slashed. Rudolf leaves without killing Yukina and attacks the man-made island management corporation's man base. Koju's eyes open after a while. Yukina tells him that shortly after he died, his body began to heal on its own and the blood returned to his body. Just then the building shakes due to an earthquake. Koju reads the news on his phone that someone has attacked the keystone of the island. Asagi also gets trapped in the man-made island management corporation's building. Koju calls Asagi to find out about Rudolf's location. They learn that Rudolf is about to do something that will submerge the whole island. Yukina wants to stop him but she doesn't have the strength to fight him so she cuts her neck and asks Koju to drink her blood. Koju hesitantly embraces Yukina and starts drinking her blood with his four fangs, which gives him a new power. Rudolf also reaches for that special thing and orders Astarte to take it. Koju and Yukina also reach there and say that they will not let him take that hand. Rudolf reveals that the creator of this island created it with the powers of the four mysterious beasts, but it was unbalanced. To balance it, he sacrificed a very wise saint from his country's church. So he has come to take his hand back even if all the people of the island die for it. Koju gets very angry with this and again lightning starts flashing around him. Koju tries to punch Rudolf but he escapes. To fight Koju, Rudolf activates his special armor and attacks Koju one after the other. Koju also does not want to back down from the fight, he summons his fifth familiar Regulus arm which looks like a very dangerous fireline. Regulus goes to attack Rudolf but Astarte stops him with her barrier and pushes him back. Yukina uses her most powerful attack to break Astarte's barrier, then Koju gets Regulus to attack her with a powerful lightning attack, in which Yukina's weapon is destroyed and Astarte is defeated. After this, Koju punches Rudolf in the face and leaves him defeated. Then Koju sucks Astarte's blood and makes her his own, so that Astarte's lifespan will increase and she will not die soon. Then we see Koju's friend Yaze gets to know everything that happened over there through a crow. Later, Yukina thinks that the organization will call her back due to the broken weapon, so she is packing her things, but then the doorbell rings and Yukina is given a new weapon from the organization, she can continue to keep an eye on Koju. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.